Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Autoblog. Over the last six to seven months, we have filmed quite a lot of Subarus on the channel, including the Outback. We have compared this vehicle to the Forester. We've done proper reviews of the Onyx Edition and also the Limited. And this time around, we're gonna take a look at the 2021 Touring XT. This is the new trim that we have never featured on the channel. And of course, we have the turbo under the hood and also the Napa leather interior. Now, if you've been a longtime subscriber to the channel or you are checking out all the Subaru reviews that we've done here at Subaru of Wakefield, you're probably as acclimated with the Outback as I am. But for myself, I want to provide as much value to you guys as possible and help you find the right vehicle. So that's why I am here to check out the Touring XT. One of the unique characteristics of the Outback, more so than any other vehicle in the Subaru lineup, is that as you work your way up through the different trim levels, you're going to notice improved interior materials. With the Premium, you get cloth seats. With the Limited, you get leather. With the Onyx Edition, you have water-resistant fabric seats. And for the Touring XT, Napa leather seats, which I have to say is the closest you're going to get to luxury without having to pay the luxury car price. So in this video, we're gonna check out the Subaru Outback Touring XT and see why. If you're looking for a comfortable and luxurious crossover, paying $40,000 for an Outback might be a great decision. Now before we get in this review, I'd like to thank Subaru of Wakefield in Wakefield, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Subaru inventory. Now, speaking of inventory, Subaru of Wakefield is home to the largest selection of Subarus in New England. And for right now, the 2021 model years are being sold for 2020 prices. So now is definitely the time to buy a new Subaru. Now, if you are hesitant to walk into a dealership, especially with what's been going on, you can buy your new Subaru online. You can also schedule an appointment or you can buy your vehicle in person. Whatever makes you feel more comfortable, Subaru of Wakefield is here for you. Also, with it being October, it's Subaru Loves Pets Month, which means Subaru will be donating $100 to a local charity for every pet adopted. And Subaru of Wakefield has chosen Forever Home Rescue in Medfield, Mass. So as I've said, over the last year or so, working with Subaru of Wakefield, the dealership is all about charity work and giving back to the community. And that's exactly what they're going to do this month. So definitely check out what they have on inventory. I think you're gonna be very impressed, but also more importantly, they treat you like family. So it's a great place to buy your new Subaru. And so with all that being said, let's get right in this review. Subarus have always been known for their utility and versatility, especially in winter and off-road. But what often gets overlooked is the advancements the brand has made when it comes to safety and interior comfort. Sure, we can take a good long look at the exterior styling and conclude that Subaru is far more reserved, rarely making any changes to their vehicles throughout the last decade. But as we'll find out with the Outback Touring XT, this Japanese manufacturer has aspirations to be seen as something more than just a practical crossover dominant brand. In fact, it's this Outback we have today that will demonstrate the upscale and entry level luxury side to Subaru. Starting off with pricing, the Touring XT comes in at $39,945, which sits atop of the Outback lineup. Not surprising, there's no major changes for the 2021 model year, as last year we saw the minor facelift Subaru made to this crossover back in 2019, when we featured the all new Onyx Edition that also comes equipped with water resistant fabric seats. Dimensions and ground clearance go untouched. However, there's been a welcoming standard feature to every trim for the Outback, and that's LED steering responsive headlights and LED fog lights meaning that halogens will not be making an appearance moving forward, which is most certainly a welcoming sight. As expected, 
the rest of the front fascia, including the grille design, remain the same for 2021. Moving over to the side profile, the Touring XT is sitting on 18-inch alloy wheels, which comes standard for all models except for the base and premium trims. As with most crossovers, the Outback will have roof rails, but with retractable crossbars already equipped, this vehicle is ready for adventures the minute you drive off the lot. For improved access to the roof, Subaru added aggressive molding to the rear door sills to give owners a durable and convenient platform which is also useful for when you need to clean snow off the Outback. Setting the Touring XT apart from all other trims will be satin chrome power folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for additional safety. Coming around to the back, there are no changes at all as once again you're met with plastic cladding for the lower portion of the rear fascia for the off-road and rugged look and the same taillight design with halogen turn signals. Of course, with the very subtle refresh coming last year, we weren't expecting anything drastic for 2021. Under the hood, the Touring XT is powered by a turbocharged 2.4 liter boxer four cylinder engine, putting out 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque, and is paired with a CVT. As we'll find out later during the test drive, the turbo makes a significant difference, especially during accelerations. But also, Subaru CVT mimics gear shifts much smoother than what we've experienced in competitors. Obviously, given the Outback an advantage in this segment is Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system that does come standard, while most rivals are offering a front-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive drivetrain, which might not be as effective in snow or when off-roading. For fuel economy, you can expect to receive right around 23 miles per gallon in the city and 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Inside, you're given a power adjustable heated and ventilated Napa leather seats for both the driver and passenger, adding a more upscale and comfortable experience. And the driver's side will be two position memory for added convenience. Standard will be a tilt and telescopic steering column to help you find the ideal position when behind the wheel. For 2021, not much changes from last year, as once again, you'll have a digital display in between the analog gauges. Here you can scroll through a variety of information by using the up and down arrow keys found on the lower left side of your heated leather wrap steering wheel. It's also from this display where you'll receive notifications pertaining to your car, including the rear seat reminder. Moving over to the infotainment system, the Touring XT will have the 11.6 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and the 12 speaker Harman Kardon premium audio system. Drawing the most amount of attention from this screen is the lack of button clutter as Subaru has essentially gone with a buttonless user interface if you don't include the front and rear defrosters, the up and down arrow keys for the dual zone climate control and of course the volume and tuning knobs. Rather than being drastically different than what we see in the Forester, Crosstrek, and Ascent, the Starlink infotainment system is really just enhanced and functions like an iPad or tablet. However, the major difference is that all your safety systems, including the EyeSight Driver Assist technology and X mode, are all accessed from the screen rather than physical buttons found throughout the interior. While it may appear to be complex and a bit intimidating at first, after a few minutes, it becomes second nature to use. On the Touring XT, you have a front-facing camera, which can be useful if you go off-road or parking in a tight spot. And of course, you have a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with rear automatic braking for added safety. Below, you'll find a cubby for your smartphone, but can also double as a wireless phone charging pad if you opt for it. And it's also here where there'll be two USB inputs. And rounding out the front seating area for the standard storage compartment, you'll have enough room for a smartphone and smaller items. And above will be a power moonroof, which will let in additional light into the cabin. Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off on the passenger side. And I adjust this seat a little bit further back and I still have a few inches of room to work with here. Now I am 5'5", 
So I'm the tallest person out there. I do think people in this current situation, probably around maybe 5'7", five, 5'8", five, could still be comfortable for sure. Now this seat up front, I would assume, is adjusted to someone around maybe six foot tall. So it's good to see I still have a few inches of room to work with here. Also, you do have the ability to recline the rear seats. And I have to say, even though it's not a significant uh, ability to recline like you would with the front seats, it does make a difference for sure. I, I feel more relaxed. I'm not as upright on a 90 degree angle. This is a little bit more comfortable for sure, especially on a longer drive. Now, for the center seat, and I've talked about this numerous times on the channel before, especially in our comparison between the Forester and the Outback, is that I still feel that the Forester is a better option to go with if you have a bigger family. Uh, for a family of four, this is most certainly enough a room back here, especially where for the center seat, the rear hump isn't very aggressive and you do have a good placement for your feet. But I think if you have three average size adults back here, they're still gonna be pretty squished and cramped. So I do think that if you are uh, looking for a more practical crossover where you, where you can fit a third person uh, on a daily basis, definitely look at the Forester. And then on the driver's side, I have adjusted the seat to someone of my height around 5'5", five five, and I have plenty of legroom to work with here. So the Outback is definitely a decent sized vehicle where, again, if you do have uh, four people in the car, they're all gonna be very comfortable, especially with these Napa leather seats. Also, what I wanna point out too is that the head uh, headroom that you have here. Now, if you do have taller passengers, you might wanna go with that Forester because the Forester has more of a traditional crossover SUV roof line, whereas the Outback is more of a station wagon, a lifted station wagon, where it is considered a crossover, but the roof line is very car-like. So definitely keep that in mind if you do have taller passengers back here on a daily basis. Also back here, you do get two rear air vents to go along with two level heated outboard seats, two USB inputs, and rounding out the rear seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you will get a power lift gate. And inside you're gonna find right around 32 and a half cubic feet of rear cargo space. Now with the rear seats folded down, that space more than doubles in size to right around 75.7 cubic feet. So this vehicle is very practical. There's more than enough room for items if you're going to the mountains for skiing and snowboarding, or maybe you're going hiking during the summer, but there's definitely enough room if you do plan on going on a vacation with the family. Now also more importantly is that you don't have to physically lower those rear seats. On either side of the rear cargo area, there are some quick release tabs, and just by tugging on them, the rear seats will fold quickly and automatically. Also, you will find a cubby area on the right side with some netting, so if any smaller items that might get thrown around, you can store them right there and they'll be just fine. And then of course, my favorite feature is the rear cargo cover, which keeps all your valuable items out of sight. So if you're like me and you have camera gear and maybe you're going to a restaurant with some friends and some family, you can leave that right there and people won't be peeking in and stealing what you have. Now of course, with any vehicle with a power lift gate, you can just press the button and you'll be on your way. However, with the Outback, there's a nice cool feature. So with everything going on right now with social distancing and also curbside pickup, the Subaru Outback has a really great feature for the times we live in. Now this isn't anything new. You could get this last year on the 2020 model year, but you don't have to leave your vehicle to open and close the rear tailgate. So you're going to notice a single row of buttons. And on the far left, there will be a button that will open and close that rear tailgate. And by pressing and holding on this button, that tailgate will open. And then after the items are stored in the back of your vehicle, press and hold again, and you can be on your way. So even though this isn't anything new, it's a great feature to highlight and check out, especially where if you are apprehensive of being close to other people right now, this is definitely a must have feature. All right, so let's take out the Subaru Outback see how it drives, and also more importantly, how it would compare to a Subaru Forester if you were in the market for both vehicles. Now, before I even started reviewing this vehicle today, I'd actually talked to a former Outback owner, and she said these vehicles are like driving a cloud, and I have to say, she's right. It's actually really soft driving this vehicle. Um, the soft suspension is really nice. Now, of course, with any Subaru, you're going to have very aggressive safety systems. 
And once again, as I go around a parked vehicle on a somewhat tight street, you get the notification that you're over the line. But also something too, and that this is really important for younger drivers, especially when they have friends in the car with them, is that the Subaru Outback lets you know if you don't have your seatbelt on and the beeping will get even louder if you continue driving. So that's really important to have, especially for younger drivers, but also I think for anybody who is looking for a safe driving experience. And that's what Subaru is offering here with the Outback. Now let's just do a quick acceleration here. I have to say, for a CVT, that shifted pretty well. You didn't have that long duration of hearing uh, the, the revs go way too high. That actually was impressive. I'm a bit impressed here. Yeah, this isn't like most CVTs that you're going to experience in this segment. Uh, this is actually quite impressive. You hear people complain about CVTs, but not so much with this. I, I, this actually mimics a real automatic. Now, the top reason why, though, I really want to take this Outback on a test drive, despite the fact that I've reviewed this vehicle numerous times and compared it to the Forester, is that when it comes to driving experience, it's a lot different than the Forester. The Forester is more of a crossover. It feels like a crossover, whereas the Outback is actually very similar to the Legacy. It feels like a car, but you're higher up off the ground. So you have the ground clearance, you have uh, the seating position feeling that, the feeling that you're higher up off the ground. So you have that crossover feel from that standpoint, but it drives very much like a car. So if you're looking for practicality, you're looking for off-road worthiness, but you wanna have that driving experience that leans more towards a car, then going with the Outback makes more sense than the Forester. If we're just strictly basing this off a of driving experience and you don't necessarily wanna go in the crossover direction, but you have to because you have a family or you need that extra cargo room, then I would definitely recommend going with the Outback over the Forester for sure. Now there's a few additional reasons why you want to upgrade to an Outback over a Forester, and one being the fact that you have a turbocharged four-cylinder engine under the hood, which you do not have that ability with the Forester. Also, we have Napa leather seats, and even though this, we're, this video is basically about the Touring XT, you do have the option to go with water resistant fabric seats, which I personally like. I think that uh, the water resistant fabric seats are really comfortable, and they do mimic uh, the feeling of leather, even though they are fabric. But the Napa leather seats are really comfortable and it just adds to more of the upscale driving experience that Subaru is going with for the Touring XT. And I have to say, when you're looking at a price tag at $40,000, I think you're receiving quite a lot, especially where you have uh, the soft touch padding throughout the interior. But of course, you have the safety systems, you have the 11.6 inch touchscreen, which is pretty big. It's It's really up to date when it comes to modern technology. So I just think that when you're looking at a non-luxury brand, what Subaru is offering here is pretty significant, especially at its price point. Now also when it comes to driving dynamics and how it handles, it's more refined than say a Ford Escape and a Chevrolet Equinox. Now steering is somewhat loose, but it's very responsive, very direct. I personally prefer tighter steering, but this is definitely better than what you would find in a Ford product. And then of course, with most vehicles in this segment, we do have traffic sign recognition. So you know if you're in a school zone, you know if you are in a area where you can go a little faster. So that's pretty cool to have. But this is definitely more on the higher tech side, despite the fact that it actually is minimalistic. The Sub Subarus in general are minimalistic, but somehow find a way to give you a comfortable driving experience that also has decent technology that's definitely up to par with most brands in this segment. So uh, I definitely like what Subaru's doing here, especially where a lot of brands in this segment are going more towards the luxury side of things where uh, you know they're giving you leather seats, but they're giving you higher tech. And Subaru is definitely moving in that direction. And when it comes to the interior design, interior refinement, and just the layout, this is definitely up there with most vehicles. So at the end of the day, what I like the most about the Subaru Outback Touring XT is that it's simplistic, but also luxurious. We also have the high-tech features of the 11.6-inch touchscreen and the facial recognition software. So you have the safety systems, the technology features, and of course the comfort features with the Napa leather seats that are heated and ventilated. These seats also provide a good amount of bolstering too for a non-sports vehicle. 
Now also, of course, the rear seats are heated and you get a power moonroof. So for $40,000, you're receiving quite a lot. Now, as I said before, when you're comparing this to say a Forester, I think the Outback leans more towards more of a car, actually. It's based off the legacy, and you feel that. You definitely feel that when you're driving the vehicle around town, whereas the Forester is definitely a true crossover. So definitely keep that in mind. Uh, we've, already done, we've already gone over this comparison before earlier in the year, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave the link in the description below. But I do think the Subaru Outback is a great vehicle for a family of four. It's very comfortable. Uh, the soft touch padding throughout just gives this vehicle a nice, high quality and luxurious feel. And I definitely love what Subaru has done here with the interiors. They've definitely focused on providing a comfortable environment where you and your passengers will have a really nice and enjoyable experience if you're going on long road trips to maybe the mountains for skiing and snowboarding or you're just going on road trips for a vacation. But overall, I definitely love what, what Subaru is doing here. And when you compare this to, say, an Onyx Edition or even a Limited, I think the Napa leather seats is definitely a nice step up, especially where you do get those ventilated uh, seats, seat option. So I just think that overall, uh, if you are looking for more of a luxury feel, but you're not willing to pay a luxury car price, the Super Outback Touring XT is definitely the way to go. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.